Well, hey, everybody. I'm back to respond to another question that came in uh, from one of the channel visitors over on the YouTube channel. And uh, like I said, these, these are great, so you guys keep them coming. Uh, you come up with some questions that I would never think of, so this, uh, this, act, this works really well. So let's get right into this, uh, because this question has to do with some things that are going on uh, in the media right now. This is a case very hot in the news, an issue very hot in the news, with uh, this Weinstein dude, and I think that's um, what prompted her to write. So she says, hello, Miss Cooper. I've been following your videos as well as listening to internet radio shows. Can you offer insight into unattractive yet powerful men and those women that are tens or alpha women who marry them and have children? And at a time where the man is going through a scandal, for example, Harvey Weinstein, they leave. Would they have left regardless or did this event give them a legitimate cause? Thank you. So that's what she wanted to know. And I can say, um, this is something that I've studied. Something, you know, because I've always worked with some very high powered, uh, you know, guys kind of at the top. I mean, they're not like, uh, what's his name of Apple, Steve Jobs level guys, but you know, they're partners in like major law firms. Um, they're pulling down some major bank. So, and with their investments and their their work and um, you know the things that they own that they bought property income property and things like that these guys are you know what I mean they're not living a shabby lifestyle no maybe nowhere on the Harvey Weinstein level but they definitely were doing some big things here in the San Francisco Bay Area so you get to see um, and then you know when I worked at this hospital um, a lot of the clients there you know their wineries and things out in that part of the state and these families owned wineries and you know I mean the labels for their wines are sold all over the country so these people were ballers too so these are people that I used to interact with regularly and I can tell you for a fact that when these men marry and they marry you know in a, in a more mature age and I'm, I'm not talking about fresh out of college they tend to marry the person that their parents want them to marry but when they're say in their 30s and 40s you know in that age range they marry who they want to marry and inevitably by then they've made it they're no longer the striving student the young guy trying to lay down his foundation they're there they're ballers they're they have a name for themselves they have positions in politics they're very well known and very powerful men so they choose the woman that they want and it tends to be that they choose a woman that we would call a trophy mate now, some of these women are educated and they have, their families may have money and they may have some little business or something. You know, they do something. The women aren't just, you know, stay at home, do nothing. They, they have something going on, but nowhere on the level of their husband. There's no way that they would be considered to be competition for him financially, pow you know, power wise, or any other way. But what these do women do have is youth and beauty. And they go to the highest bidder at, you know, at the time that they're looking for a mate. Now, when you look at this Harvey Weinstein guy, for those of you who may not be aware of it, this guy has been charged with multiple counts of sexual assault, sexual improprieties, and all this using his position at the Weinstein Company, which has to do with movie production and all that, as, uh, as his you know as his weapon I mean he he felt like that was his thing it was his power and he would use that against these women and, you, and give them money to shut up about it so back in 2007 which I forgot to do the calculations of how old that made him but anyway due to 65 now so I guess he this okay so that had to be 10 years ago okay so he was 55 that means the woman that he's married to is who is now 41 was 31 30 31 when they got married so she's 41 now and he's 65 so he's way past his prime because you know it's like some 65 year olds that keep in shape and stuff mm -mm. dude looks like a recycled alcoholic and a santa all in combined together but he's got a name he's got power and he got hella money so she marries him 
and they have two young children. The kids are only four and seven. He has three older kids by his first marriage, but um, by this wife, he has two children in there. You know, they're like, they're little, tiny kids. Now, what happened? Okay, he gets accused of all these sexual improprieties. She, within a week, girlfriend's like deuces. Now they make it sound good. They say, oh, you know, we talked about it and you know, this and that and blah, blah, blah. And uh, you know, this is best for our children and best for our family, this and that. But the bottom line is she's like, yo, look, your shit is fucked, I'm out. That's basically what happened. You know, I have to protect my children from the shit that you give me, the shit storm that's getting ready to hit you. And we're out. So you just do it the best way you can. Be sure to send that child support and I'll, you know, see you later. And that's what that's what they do. So and is this the first time that I've heard of this? No. Do I only hear of this in the media with people that are famous? No. The very first time I saw this, it was ooh, many years ago. And I was working at this law firm in Palo Alto and um, doing uh, trademark law. And, uh, you know, you're dealing with some with people down in Silicon Valley. I mean, those are some mover and shaker type folks. So I happened to, had, we had a really late lunch, I mean, late meeting, so I had, I had to go to lunch late. And it was right before the restaurant closed. You know, I skated in there. I guess it was about 2 o'clock. So I'm, you know, starving. I go into this restaurant. I'm by myself. And, you know, they're slowing down. You're ready to close. And I said, oh, you know, I'll just sit here and eat because I don't want to, you know, take it back to the office. I'm sick of those people. So I'm sitting at this table by myself. And there was this, this older white guy sitting there. And uh, he, you know, he kept looking at me. And I was like, ooh, I mean, you know, what's that all about? But finally, he stands up and he comes over and he asked me if I was eating by myself. And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'm eating by myself. You know, would you mind eating with me and I'll pay for your lunch? I just want some company. And he just looked so sad. It was something, you know, usually I'm kind of like, fuck you, you know, get the fuck away. You know how I am. But it was something about him. I, I can't even really put my finger on it that I had no resistance to doing what he wanted me to do at all. I mean, it, I just... There's just this this woe be gone little look on this man's face. I just felt sad in in that moment. So I said, sure, you know, that's that's not a problem. So I got up, you got my stuff, and I went over to his table. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, you know, he let me order whatever I wanted. So of course I ordered something that was more expensive than what I was gonna buy. Excuse me. <coughs> uh, those of you who don't know, Northern California is a blaze. And the smoke in the air is killing me. I've been coughing. So this guy, you know, he just wanted somebody to eat with him. That's really all that he was looking for. He was looking for some companionship. So I sit down and um, we start talking. You know, he, you know, the usual stuff. Are you married? I told him no. You know, my husband died. And it's just my daughter and I now. And you know this and that and so then he starts telling me his story and he says um that he was all alone and he used to be you know i told him work for this law firm he said oh you know i used to work well i'm not going to say the name of the law firm but it was a, this is this, this huge very powerful law large firm in palo alto in san francisco and he used to be a partner there and he said you know how much money he used to bring in and what his salary was and all the stuff he owned and this and that and he had this wife and he put out a picture and she, she was gorgeous and obviously at least 20 25 years younger than he was and um they didn't have any children together he had some from his first marriage though and he told me that what happened was um he got sick he had a heart attack and when he was in the hospital he said the firm sent like some flowers and you know the obligatory card and the get well soon kind of thing one or two of the associates came by to see him and none of his kids came and his wife came a couple of times and then after that she was like I want a divorce because of the fact that he had this heart attack he he was going to have to have some open heart surgery a long recovery period and he was never ever ever going to be able to go back to that kind of high powered stressful work so she knew 
the lifestyle that she enjoyed by being married to him was going up and smoking. It was laying on that hospital bed, slowly dying right in front of her eyes. And like I said, this woman was gorgeous. She was, you know, much younger than him and uh, and very, very, very good looking. So there would be no doubt that she could just line herself up with another man with some money and, you know, pick up right where she left off. And that is evidently what she did. So in the black community, that would be called a gold digger. She's ungrateful. She this, she that, blah, blah, blah. But you have to understand you know, very few black women look like what this chick did. You don't have them kind of kind of money. You didn't go to Vassar. You know, you don't have this kind of of heat that this chick had. She's like at the top of the food chain, and plus she was, you know, down there in Palo Alto. She had the look that white guys like: skinny, long hair, big eyes, blue, you know, big blue eyes, and blonde. Her hair was naturally blonde. So she was like at the top of the white girl food chain and she knew it and she was going to use it to her advantage to get everything that she wanted from men with money and power. Now, when you look at a situation like what's going on with this, this, this Weinstein guy, it's the same thing. His wife is much younger than him. I think she's like 20, 21, 22 years younger than he is. She looks like a model. You know, I don't know if she has what she used to do or not, but I do know that she owns a design company and she is leaving him. I mean, like I said, within a, within a week from the scandal breaking, girlfriend didn't waste no time. She's up out of there. We know what happened with Kobe, who's another person I put up on a slide. You know, he managed to finagle his wife back. And you notice he's been quiet as a church house mouse ever since we heard shit from Kobe. But Vanessa was about to leave his ass and take half, too. And he, you know, and they also had two small children. So he was going to be coming out the ass for child support. And um, she, you know, whatever they decided to do, they stayed together you know, after the scandal he had. But um, it wasn't as, as bad as this guy whose who's, who's sex scandal behavior has been. Uh, these women, it's going back several decades. You know, Kobe he just had a one-time situation that is real shaky. You know, the girl was proven to be kind of not wrapped too tight so there's really um was really no solid evidence against him so maybe that's why she stayed but i'm saying all this just to and respond to this young lady's question about women who who uh, marry these guys and and have a couple of kids and then they leave they know it's not that she was going to leave regardless she was going to stay because all of them were going to stay because as long you know as long as they were getting their needs met and the men adhered to the original the original agreement the agreement is i'll be here with you i will be on your arm i will provide you with youth and beauty and sex with a hot young body and you know young kids and all the stuff that you want but in return you're going to pay me you're going to take care of me you're going to deliver financially i'm not going to want for anything and neither is my mama and you're going to be my kids Kids are gonna have the best of everything and that's just the way it is and if you you renege on that deal in any way shape or form I'm the fuck up out of here the guys know that that's what it is they sign on for that so there's no reason to feel sorry for them they know what they're getting into they know what the arrangement is when they get with these women okay so everybody stop tripping dudes be like well you know she just this she's that you think this man is innocent you think these 40-year-old dudes don't know what the fuck is going on? And they just you know, are blinded and think the women just only love them? Those women will love who, the man who's going to provide them the lifestyle to which they want to become accustomed. That's how this shit works. And if a woman is not as youthful and not as beautiful, then she'll have a decision to make. Usually those are the women who will stay with the man or try to work it through at least for a hot minute. Now, with Anthony Weiner's wife, she's, you know, she's not as young and she's not as beautiful. I mean, she's pretty, you know, but she's not like a, you never say she's a 10. She's not that good looking. So she tried to deal with dudes. She stayed. They had a little boy. I think the kid was maybe three when the first scandal broke. But then this fool turned around and sent somebody else another dick picture. And then this one with a girl who was a minor. She's 15. So his ass just got sentenced like a couple of weeks ago. He's going to do 21 months. Well, I mean, that was his sentence. I don't know how much time he's going to actually do. Because, you know, they negotiate time served and, you know, blah, 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 house arrest, probation, blah, blah, blah. So who knows how much time he'll actually spend behind bars. But his sentence is 21 months for sexting a minor child. 
So his wife left him though because well, she could see what was the shit storm that was coming his way and she didn't want to be a part of it she did not want any of that shit rolling on her or her kid so you know you guys have it's unfortunate especially that black women are not taught to think like this black women are taught to stay with the man no matter what you know you got to have his back you got to be a soldier you got to stay with him you have to be with him you have to support him you have to no matter what kind of shit he puts you through no matter how selfishly he does what he wants to do and sacrifices you and the children your family his family his mama everybody everybody he don't give a shit about none of that he's only thinking about what he wants to do and which is involve himself in some bullshit that has to do with um you know all these sex scandal type of behaviors so, but you know, the black women will stay. And these chicks are like, but I have other options. I don't have to stay. So that's what it is. You know, the fact that the men are powerful is irrelevant. I mean, it is, is as far as them getting into relationship, as far as her staying, it has nothing to do with it. Um, the guys do tend to be unattractive because guys who are really good looking tend to not be the ones with the major power because they're too busy chasing skirts. The guys who are kind of the the geeky ones or the women the ones that women kind of rejected those are the ones who don't get the woman that they wanted when they were young but by the time they get the power and the money when they're in their late 30s to you know 50s that's when they get a trophy wife because now they have something to use to attract her they'd only had their ugly face before that and no money so once they have money and power and a title and a name for themselves then they're more attractive to these types of women the women that they want so guys you know don't get mad because the women go for the men with money they go with the men with money and that's what the men with money want they want those kind of women and they waited until they got the money to go after them so it's a mutual agreement there there's no point in being angry at the women for being gold diggers and the dudes for liking gold diggers I mean that's what they like that's like them two belong together okay so that I hope answers your question um it is a legitimate cause as far as why those two entered into their relationship. Um, he was no longer able to keep his end of the bargain. So once she discovered that, you know, she's got to get out and she got to get her somebody else before she use, loses too much of that youth and beauty. So she got to, you know, the time is of the essence, the minutes are ticking. And she got to, you know, make some stuff happen before too much time passes by and she doesn't look the same way that she looks now. So um, that's that's my take on it. That's the, you know from everything that I've ever witnessed about uh, those kinds of marriages. The women leave when the man shit gets shaky and he can't he can't deliver. He can't give her what it is that she signed on for, and uh, and she's gone. So that's my explanation for that, and uh, I hope it responds to your questions. If not, if you have additional questions or some other comments you want to make on this topic, feel free to put it down below in the comment section. I will talk to you guys real soon. Hope you enjoyed that video here on the Depsterism channel where we talk about dating, relationships, and all forms of culture that relate to male-female romantic relationships familial relationships and culture and society if you're not already a subscriber please take a moment and click the subscribe button it's indicated by the pointing finger there once you click it you'll see a bell symbol click that and you'll receive notices directly from YouTube right on your cell phone of when new content is uploaded to this channel we'd like it if you take a moment to to share some of your favorite videos with your friends and your own social media pages to help the channel grow. It also helps get the word out to other women who need this information and I'm not able to reach them on my own. There are a lot of young ladies really struggling with their romantic life and making some really shaky and sad choices with men. So please help them out. Just share a link and tell a friend. This is Deb Cooper. I'll talk to you real soon.